This conference will now be recorded. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to call uh, the meeting to order. This is the Board of Assessment Appeals uh, regular virtual meeting for the Grand List October 1st, 2020. Today is Thursday, March 18th. Uh, we're going to do the pre Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so in attendance tonight, we have Mr. Shelby Jackson, assessor, Mr. Carl Bonamico, member, Mr. Robert Avery, member, Mr. Tom Vitale, chairman. Ms. Shelley Hemingway, Recording Secretary, and Mr. Kevin Coons, Chief Appraiser. So uh, item uh, number four is approval of minutes. So I'd like to hear a motion on the prior minutes that we have received and looked over. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to approve the prior minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we're going to move on to our first appeal of the evening. Which is appeal 2020-044 Yalesville Properties. <coughs> Is Mr. Gavin going to be in, a, in attendance? No, sir. So do we have an authorization form for Mr. Gavin for you to represent him? I can easily get you one. Because I, I don't see that. Um, I have one. I, I see can you as say. the appellant, but I see him as the signed. So. Yes, sir. Um, at the time when I filed it, I apologize. I didn't realize that this is going to be a virtual. Um, I can easily email that over tomorrow or tonight. No, well, we're not going to do it tomorrow. We're going to do it, you know, now. I mean, you have to be, you know, authorized by Mr. Gavin to represent him. So. Not one of these, not one of these appeals has that paperwork. So, Mr. Chairman, would you like me to email th that to the assessor's um, uh, email address? No, no, but I don't think I don't think. Can we uh, get that tonight, Kevin? I, that's a question I have for Shelby. That um, I believe I would be able to access uh, the assessor's email from my phone. Um, okay, um, appropriate or not, but I, I can certainly do that. But well, it's, it's, he could send it to me, but that's even more inappropriate, but, um, yeah, he can send it, but let's do that. Okay. So you're going to have to get that. Mr. Gavin's not here and you're not, I, you know, there's nowhere is it he's authorizing you to speak on his behalf. And also, uh, because of the, the number of appeals and the amount of information that you sent this afternoon that the board has not seen, we will review each appeal. We are not gonna vote on each appeal, okay? So we will review and listen, and then um, we will uh, have a meeting uh, probably next week as the board to discuss each each appeal there's just too much information here to try to 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 do this properly tonight so so why don't you um get some kind of authorization from mr gavin i just uh yep no problem okay after i log off um mr chairman i'm going to send that to the assessor's um, email address 
Okay, when we get that, then we'll then we'll start your your process. Okay, so should Thanks. I just log off, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, probably. Yeah, there's no sense okay. in it. Just thank you. Have a nice day. Yep. Thank you. So uh, if you have not looked at, at his emails, this might be a good time because there's a big void for a while to look to look at what he sent. But um, Uh, I think we should start calling some of the people later in the evening and get them in here sooner because this looks like it's going to be a bust on as far as all the the, the Mulready hearings. Is he coming back, Mr. Chairman? He uh, is uh, going to get an authorization from Mr. Gavin and send it to the Wallingford Assessor email. So we, I mean, the form says he's the appellant. But the property owner, and, and it's signed by Mr. Gavin. I mean, I think we need authorization from Mr. Gavin. Absolutely. Is that is that a Absolutely. correct statement? Absolutely. In fact, I mean, the application is incomplete at this point. Correct. The applications also are not correct because he has Yalesville property on every application. When some of the property owners, the next one is 38 Warehouse Point Road, LLC. So the applications aren't correct either. <clears throat> That's true. So maybe we should not hear the ones that don't. The appeal does not match the town field card. So, and right now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of 12 that don't match up, so. Okay, so I, Shelby, I don't know, you know, uh, you got the David Johnson one, um, 10 Fairfield and Ferdy, right? Yes. <clears throat> Maybe you can, uh, you can reach him and we can we can take care of those those are pretty uh pretty easy All right, let, me look, let me look up the phone number and i'll i'll start doing that now okay so I, i'm gonna not drop out I'm, I'm gonna go read some of this information in this packets here uh, mr chairman what i'll do i'll reach out to dennis laforge i spoke to him earlier today maybe he can sign okay. on or okay that's fine
Uh, so I just talked to David Johnson. He's gonna he's gonna dial in or call in. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Hello. Good evening. Hi. This is David Johnson. Okay. Thanks for uh, joining us. Um, oh, no problem. Okay. So we're going to go. Um, the board is here. So I, I think. Uh, Shelby, you're here, I see. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, David, we're going to go to um, Birdie Management, which is 2020-088. And uh, so let me find that and we'll start. Uh, All right. 20, okay. Hello. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, Mr. Johnson, swear you in. Okay. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Yes. Okay. So this is hearing number 2020-088. Property owner is Ferkey Management Corp. Yeah. Uh, nope. Office concerning this property, and um, Mr. Jackson and you have reached a consensus on a um, market value for the property. Correct. And and that is in that uh, three million seven hundred thousand is the market value. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. This is Shelby. And and the and the and the client agrees that, you know, by accepting this that no further appeal will be taken. Correct. Okay. If Mr. Johnson could just affirm that. Yeah, that is correct. No further appeal. Okay. So uh, do I hear a motion from the board? Make a motion uh, to reduce the property market value to three million seven hundred thousand market value. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> okay, then we'll move on to
Hearing number 2020-090, Ken Fairfield Realty, again, represented by Mr. David Johnson. We have authorization. And you and Mr. Jackson have worked out a new market value and that market value uh mr johnson is uh yes it's uh two million one hundred thousand that's correct mr chairman this is shelby okay and also same as uh on the Ferdy property you'll there'll be no further appeal um yes no further appeal correct okay do i hear a motion make a motion to reduce the market value to two million one hundred thousand Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Johnson. All right. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> Kevin, you got someone else here? Mark, I'm not sure. Yeah, hello. Hi, Mark. How are you? How are Am you? I late or was uh, Mr. Mulready already uh, here representing me? Um, uh, Four Tower Drive. Four Tower Drive? Yeah. Mr. Mulready had to uh, uh, attend to something, some paperwork. So he will be back. Um, if you'd like to, why don't you check back in about 10 minutes to see if he has uh, some, some items. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Shelby, are you there? Yes. Um, I was. I'm uh, having difficulty logging into our assessor's um, email. Do you have access to our email? Uh, no, I don't. And I, you know, I think Mr. Mulready, you know, it's it's his responsibility to uh, to make sure that this was properly filed. Our instruction sheet clearly states that it has to be presented i think it says a couple of days before or with the application or i mean with, you know it's with. you know i mean the board has been i think rather generous in, in giving him an opportunity to correct himself uh, but i don't i don't i don't have access to the email and i'm not going to you know go out of my way to, to to try to figure that out i guess there's a website you go to it's something Round like you round cube website and then you can try to access it there but i've never done that um so i'm not going to be able to do it here tonight that's for sure yeah 
Well, I think, in, I, Shelby, I agree with you. I think there's something of this magnitude where all these properties could have had this uh, prior to the meeting. I agree. Of course, of course. I mean, you know, any, you know, it's it's their responsibility. The burden of proof is on the other party. We're, we've been very um, customer friendly, if you want to call it, for lack of a better term. We try to be accommodating and we don't, you know, just dismiss someone on a technicality. We want to hear their case. Uh, but, you know, there's certain obligation on, on the other side to make sure the paperwork is properly filed. It's pretty hard for the board to make a, a, a reasoned decision without the proper uh, paperwork on file. Well, to overload the board with, with that information, basically when the meeting started, um, you know, so if we, um, if, if, do we have to hear from, you know, um, from the appellant or can we take these ourselves and review them and vote on them so you cannot under i think it's 12-113 connecticut law section 12-113 it clearly states that the board of assessment appeals cannot reduce the value of any property unless the appellant shows up in person now okay. um it, that in person has been relaxed to be virtually through an executive order of the government governor so they either have to show up in person or, or through this go to meeting format in order to, for the board to, to make a decision otherwise it's basically like a no show no change okay and you're under no obligation to reschedule all of these hearings i mean this is basically your whole night was mostly dedicated to this one one uh tax rep <clears throat> if in fact he does email it to that um, email address well, nobody's able to look at it to confirm confirm anything I just anticipate Brian did what we asked him to do and then he sent it and now it's there and nobody can read it well that's that's a valid point um I suppose, and I'm just thinking out loud now for the board's consideration, I suppose you could hear what he has to say, and then uh, your decision would be subject to those those authorization letters getting here. But I mean, on the other hand, the board can just say, you didn't file a paperwork, see you later. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a board decision. It really is a board decision, and I'm not going to encourage one way or the other uh, i just lay out the options um shelby i would have maybe one more option i don't know if the person that just called if the owner is online with uh with the applicant during the meeting is, is that i mean if I, I guess look the long and short of it if he's able to get john gavin or one of the owners on the phone to meet with us then i would that be an option well, john, if john gavin was was on the phone you know then there is no yeah, yeah no problem um i mean he's he's welcome to to handle his other clients how however he has them set up uh i'm okay let me let me hear from the other board members you know your opinions about listening to the appeals not voting on it and we're not going to vote on it uh, until we uh, get the proper authorization um, from My John opinion, Gavin to, to, to Brian Mulready. It, uh, my opinion is uh, that we get a chance. I like I like the idea uh, when we first started. We get a chance to um, kind of exchange thoughts and ideas about the property. Get a chance to look at it. We received the email, which were you know, three emails, separate attachment, very lengthy. Um, 
I say we 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 discuss it um, Saturday and vote on it next week in a special meeting. Yeah, and, and he, well, but we have to let him discuss it with it tonight to uh, with us tonight each one. So you're asking, I mean, should we even do that? Uh, is your question? Yes, I mean, we can't review his appeals unless we hear him. Correct, Shelby? Um, so let me, let me make sure I understand the question. So you need to either hear from an authorized agent. Correct. Uh, with the letter stating as such, or, or the property owner. They need to make their case before the board. You consider what they say and what they present in terms of documents, and then you deliberate and make a decision. So uh, you're right. Tom, if, if he was to get the property owner on the line with him, you could move forward that way. Um, otherwise, really, he's he's kind of uh, he he hasn't he hasn't filed a proper appeal at this point. I don't know how else to say it. Correct. Plus the paperwork you said it, Tom. The paper paperwork hasn't the uh, the right properties on it. Wasn't filled out properly. Yeah. Um, I mean, either we say, you know, no to all of them, if, he can, if, if we can't receive written authorization this evening, um, I, I don't want to create a situation for the property owner to be, you know, upset with the town because of a third party independent person, all right, failed, you know, to get this properly uh, admitted. So if that's the case, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, uh, if it would please the board, perhaps you should hear from Mr. Mulready tonight and, uh, you know, take everything he says under advisement, take notes and so forth and so on. Right. And then once those authorization letters are are properly filed uh, at that point you could take up uh, at another at a future meeting deliberate on the several appeals and make a ruling i i believe that is probably going to be in the better is interest of of the town to, de to deny because of this is is not going to be in the best interest of the town i think, I think you it's going to have long long term um, issue. Well, I I think you I think you're uh, making a wise choice, and if, if and that and that's a good recommendation for your board members. And if that's what you decide, then so be it. Board members, what what do you think? I mean, but we would not vote on it until we get their authorization, whether it be correct. tonight, tomorrow. Correct. I think I I I agree with that. We're, we're not going to vote on any of them, whether he gets the authorization tonight or not. We're not going to vote on any of them. We will hear them. We will not act on them until we get the authorization, and then we will act on them, and then we will report to him uh, uh, you know, written, a written uh, response. I think that's fair. We're not going right? to have another hearing. We'll, we'll respond in writing to each appeal, because we need the time to look at the paperwork that was just admitted. Okay, so, so with your That's permission, fine. Mr. Chairman, I will contact Mr. Mulready right now, ask him to log back in, uh, and I'll explain to him, you know, right. what you just- That's fine, and because because uh, Mark is waiting for Mr. Mulready, so th let's not hold him up because of, of all this other uh, uh, appeals. So I, I agree with you on that, uh, Shelby. Please get a hold of them and tell them tell them the plan we we uh, we wanted to do. So, uh, <laughs> Mark is here. Yeah, hi. State Highway 295. I'm trying to get Brian already back on the on the uh, into the meeting. So give us give us a couple minutes. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
Mr. Chairman, if I may, I, um, just to just for the record, that I know that Shelby has worked extensively with Brian on a lot of these properties um, during the informal I, process and in person and with the owners, and he spent a lot of time and whatnot. And uh, during the hearing, the the properties that he thought could be changed were warranted, and, and he did so. And the others, he's so we're, from our standpoint, we don't recommend any changes on these properties. Correct. <clears throat> Which is and, and and again, you know, um, due to the number of of, of properties, um, I think we need to uh, take them individually and discuss them, uh, sure. so we know what work the assessor's office has already done and, and what went into that. Uh, those changes, I know some have not changed, uh, and he has supplied that information. You know, this evening also that needs to be reviewed. I don't know. I I looked at that information. Uh, Kevin, have you seen that in prior uh, work with these properties, or you that's new to you this evening also? Looking through it very very briefly, I did see some income and expense statements that were submitted uh, tonight, but they were also submitted for the informal hearing process. On some of uh, on some of them, them. but okay. there, I didn't see yeah. that much he's added. Okay. okay. All right. Um, I I think that's you know what what we'll uh, we'll do we'll we'll take all the information and in, in, uh, over um, over the weekend or, or what have you. Let's let's look at it, review it. Then we'll then we'll meet. And then we'll, you know, one by one go through it and, and uh, okay. um, come up with some review of it all. That sounds like a good idea. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mulready will be logging in soon. Uh, I explained to him that he can make his presentation tonight and that uh, he needs to get the authorization letters to us in the next couple of days and that the board would deliberate and, and make a decision at a later date. Um, so we'll take it from there. Okay. Um, and he should be on any minute now. And, and we're going to go right to uh, Four Tower Drive, hearing number 2020-111. Oh. Okay, we're going to, uh, Brian, we're going to go to uh, uh, hearing number 2020-111, Fort Tower Drive. Uh, Mr. Uh, Greenberg is, is with us, so we're going to go right to that. Okay. Okay, so uh, the hearing will be 2020-111. I'm going to swear both of you in. testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. 
Yes. The property is Ford Power Drive. Uh, market value placed on it by the owner is thousand. So the t the town currently has a. Um, The current the current market value is one million seventy six thousand three hundred, which was reduced at the informal hearing. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it was reduced. Okay, so it was reduced to one million seventy six. Thousand three hundred. Yes, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> so, do you have um, an appraisal? Do you have? Uh, we did a, um, a market analysis, uh, Mr. Chairman, and there are several um, vacant uh, office buildings that have transferred in the last several years. Um, 866 North Main Street Extension transferred. Uh, that was not 100% vacant, um, but it was a arm's length transaction, and that sold for $19 a square foot or $625,000. The subject property has been vacant for over six years. Um, it is uh, located at the end of a cul-de-sac. It does not have any visibility from any major road. Um, I, uh, I don't mean to sound obnoxious, but do you know where uh, Tower Road is, sir? I do, and I also know there's a tenant going in there. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Greenberg, could you uh, acknowledge that, please? Uh, Mark, are you there? He's muted, Kevin. You're going to have to unmute him. Okay. He's unmuted now. Can you hear me now? Mark, are you there? I'm here. I don't know how to mute. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, I think I'm unmuted. Yes, you are. You are. You are. You are. Yeah, you're okay. Okay. Yeah, anyway, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to participate, and this is such new information, uh, Two days ago, we signed a lease with uh, CMC Energy Services, and I wanted to be here to withdraw my application because of that, that tenancy. So I very much thank you, and uh, I do not request or require uh, any further action on this commission. Do I hear uh, a motion? A motion on uh, no vote. Second. Okay, and the motion is to to remove the appeal. Um, on for, the north for two miles. Make a motion to remove the uh, uh, the appeal and no and uh, not vote. So I, 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 I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I don't want to be jumping in here, but I would just you know add no change. You know, no, no change. Okay, no change. Uh, withdraw. And no change. Withdraw by the applicant. No change. Let me put the motion again. I make a motion uh, to remove the appeal and make no change. Very cool. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Greenberg. Uh, Thank you very much. You got, uh, Brian, do you have any other ones on here that are not um, uh, John Gavin? Um, Yes, Mr. Chairman, actually, I do. Um, uh, seven North Turnpike Roads, uh, Mr. Chairman. Seven North Turnpike Road. Yeah, that is, um, see, unique ID number H04161140. Or if you're looking for a different number, hearing number 2020-108, Mr. Chairman. Okay, well, 
Um, I also will uh, be providing an agent letter on that as well, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> okay, so let me uh, find that. Uh, okay, by the way, um, that was like great information hot off the press. I spoke to Mr. Greenberg uh, less than three days ago, and he did not have a signed uh, a bit of information. So um, I have no idea if you um, are better than um, the uh, the uh, the Puritans uh, back in uh, in that day, or how you ended up coming up with that. But that's um, that's great, and I'm sure he's thrilled to have a tenant for the first time in six years. I, I love back there. I think it's the greatest spot in the world. I, I grew up as a kid playing back there, so I know right where it is. So um, My very first experience back there, Mr. Chairman, was um, walking that vacant land um, that's no longer vacant, and I ended up uh, noticing a, um, um, a, um, uh, a hunting stand for deer. Yeah, you can drive in there and see deer all the time in there it's 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 a nice spot back there but yes sir okay so let's uh go to uh worldwide properties and and do you have authorization for this or no yes sir i do i as i mentioned um a few minutes ago i would send that as long along with uh the things from mr gavin Okay, so we're we're going to take this one also, and we will listen to the appeal. We will not vote on it tonight. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. So let me excuse me a minute. I, I need to get a piece of paper to, to write some notes down for for this. <laughs> Okay, so this is 2020. It's 2020-108, sir. Okay. Have you spoke with Mr. Jackson in his office about this property or no? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. So I'll swear you, well, you've been sworn in, so you're, You'll be good uh, for the evening. Um, so you've put a market value of four hundred and sixty thousand on the property. Yes, sir. Oh, this is the old TD Bank, correct? Okay. Yes, sir. It was designed to be a bank. <clears throat> it's now it's now a daycare that's rented. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Okay. All right. So So Kevin, um I'm reading your memo. The current market value is 557700 The appellant's estimate of market value was 460 During the informal hearing, the market value was reduced by 31.7. And um, the owner purchased the property for 525000 in 2016. No supporting documentation provided to support a value of 460 Is that... Uh, that's that's all correct. So correct. Brian, do you have any thing to um, add? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. I, I actually uh, during the informal hearings, we did submit um, several uh, comparable. Uh, uh, sales for um, um, for 
department uh, for daycare centers. Um, and during, this wouldn't have been an appeal if they wouldn't have been closed down for several months during COVID. Um, the rent has not been fully paid, uh, contract has not been fulfilled. And just like many other types of commercial property owners or um, high service types of um, commercial owners, and I would consider a daycare to be a high uh, service industry. Um, they've been se severely affected by the amount of income that they receive um, by their uh, by their members, meaning uh, parents that are paying for their children to be able to go to daycare. Um, I can tell you as as a parent, I didn't know, I no longer let my children ride the school bus. So I, I drive my children to and from. And I'm sure that there's other parents who do not allow their children to go to daycare any longer, or they're looking for a different type of um, uh, other scenario, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, and the rent has dropped off significantly, and they have not paid anywhere near to the portion of their contract rent, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, the board has heard uh, your additional. Uh, information and um sounds like there's other information available with the assessor's office from the um informal hearing yes and sir. again so we need we need authorization yes sir and we will be voting uh on this um next week uh and uh, so do i hear a motion from the board i think to table this for further review uh make a motion uh to table this case uh for further review and make decision and vote on it second all in favor aye aye okay let me just cross that off. Okay, what else uh, was a non John Gavin? Are, are you a uh, are you in o uh, Oldbrook also? Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so um, so 2020 109. So we're we're going to uh, operate under the same seven Carlton Street. We will hear the appeal. We need the authorization. We will review and vote next week on the appeal. Um, so You've placed the market value of seven hundred and twenty-five thousand. And have you met in informally uh, informal review in the in the assessor's office concerning this property? Yes. Okay. So currently the value is one million zero eighty six eight hundred. Sell it seven hundred and twenty five thousand. Um, the assessor's economic income approach to value of one million one fifty four six hundred is higher than the current market value of 1,086,800. The demand for warehouse space has increased, not decreased. No supporting documentation 
to support a value of 725. Okay, uh, Brian, what additional information do you have for the board? Um, we did provide uh, information at the informal hearing. Um, and I actually went back to um, to vision appraisal and also to Mr. Jackson. And I simply said, uh, the improvements don't have any heat. They don't have any office. They don't have any plumbing. Um, it doesn't have any air conditioning. And how desirable is really that type of space? It's cold storage. So whatever you're going to put in there, it cannot be sensitive to heat or to cold. Um, Ulbrick Steel is in the steel business. Steel doesn't tend to be um, really too, um, <clears throat> excuse me, susceptible to heat or to cold. Uh, we did a comparable assessment. You're not going to find sales of a warehouse that's 20,000 square feet over two uh, buildings that do not have heat, do not have office, do not have plumbing, and do not have air conditioning. So if you look at comparable assessments, which I did and provided to the town of Wallingford, um, there it was 10 land sales in the last uh, three or four years. Uh, so I'm not going to argue the land value, the building value with something that does not have heat, air conditioning, plumbing, office space. Most warehouses um, will have anywhere between five to 12 percent of office space and they sell for anywhere between 30 to, you know, dare I say, $70 a square foot. And this building does not have any of those. How many square feet in this building, Kevin, actually, is it? There's two buildings. Kevin, you're on mute. There's two buildings, Mr. Chairman. Um, the first building is 3,440 square feet. And the second building is 16,968 square feet. So it's approximately 20,000 square feet. Yep. Mr. Chairman and the rest of the board, if you look at other industrial warehouse buildings on a per square foot basis, uh, some of them are lower on a per square foot basis than this other property. And it does not have plumbing, does not have air conditioning, does not have an office, and does not have heat. Okay. All right. Uh, do I hear a motion from the board? Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to table 2020-109 uh, uh, at our special meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Is that it for um, um is Mr. Jackson uh, yeah. available? Um I see he's on mute. I just don't know if he's available. Oh. I'm available. Uh, Mr. Shelby Jackson. I'm here. I'm available. Um <clears throat> uh Verna um properties is willing to withdraw um, several of their properties from appeal um, based upon my discussions with uh, the town of Wallingford's assessor's office. I don't know if that's um, up for discussion or if I'm speaking out of turn, so I apologize. So, Mr. Chairman, those, I think they're on the GEM properties. There, How many are there, Brian? Are there four? There was a total of six, and they would like to withdraw three. All right. So if you you know indicate to the board one one after the other which one you know the Verna property you know that they would like to withdraw. I know you and I did talk about all the properties and we came to a consensus on some of them, uh, but that was contingent upon the withdrawal. So if you put that into the record tonight and then confirm that in writing uh, with the board uh, later, we can the board can take it up. Um, you know, at another meeting like they're doing with these other appeals. Would that be okay, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> um, you know, um, we will do the same thing. Uh, 
you know, let, let's go to the ones that you're talking about. So I, the, the first one I have here is 101 North Plains Industrial Road, Gem Property, 2020-078. Is, is that one of them? No, sir. May I uh, kindly give you um, the three properties that they would like to withdraw, please? Okay, uh, you know what I gave it, it's 720 North Main Street Extension, that, that I'm reading. Yes, sir, that. Uh, that they would like to withdraw, sir. Okay, all right, so let me withdraw, and you're gonna have to provide to the to the assessor's office a letter. Yes, right? sir. So that's 2020. 078. I just know that uh, 720 North uh, Main Street Extension, sir. They would also like to withdraw 801 North Main hold Street on, Extension. Hold on. Hold on. I'm Let me, sorry. Let's Mr. vote on this, okay? I apologize, and, Mr. Chair. Um, de depending on the letter you supply to the to the assessor's office, uh, you have to have some kind of authorization with it also. Or, yes, or, Mr. Chairman, I'll make sure that there is a agent letter for the town of Wallingford. Correct. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, I wanna uh, make a motion on 2020-078. Uh, the appeal is withdrawn, no change. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Just for the record, we are talking about 720 North Main Street. We are talking about 720, 720 North Main Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so that's... <clears throat> the next Verna property is 2020-079 that I have on the list here, which is one miles drive raw land uh we'd like to withdraw that uh mr chairman so again we need authorization and a letter. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, would it be acceptable, motion? Mr. Chairman, to have one letter with the properties that are, um, or actually would it just be acceptable to have one letter with all the six addresses saying that I'm the duly authorized agent, Mr. Chairman? Tom, can no. I help on that one? Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Jackson. That's that's. Oh, okay, well, no, I'm sorry. You were ready to make a decision, so I'll I'll, I'll back off. <laughs> I um first of all I think you need a letter authorizing to speak on the on the behalf for the all six properties okay and then I think you need to have a letter you know one is an agent authorization then a letter withdrawing um the three you're withdrawing and I don't think we need a letter for the other two because they're going to be uh, normal uh, appeals. So, uh, so just to be clear, uh, Mr. Chairman, I will get uh, six individual letters, and then uh, I can then. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Chairman. If you want to do six individual letters with authorization in. Um, go ahead. You 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 tell us what you th you, you want to do. And we'll... Um, well, my suggestion, Mr. Uh, Chairman, was to uh, uh, give a authorization letter with the um, from Verna um, properties for the six subject properties, and then to provide individual letters from myself, seeing that I have authorization to discuss this and to make these decisions with you. Uh, from myself withdrawing the other appeals. That's fine. Thank you, Mr. That would, Chairman. That would be fine. Okay. So, um, 
Have we voted on uh, 2020-079? No. Okay, so. Make a motion on uh, hearing on case 2020-079 uh, to remove, withdraw the appeal, no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the next one is 2020-080. 801 North Main Street Extension, Wallingford. Um, Mr. Chairman, we uh, are gonna withdraw our appeal and are asking for denial from the Town of Wallingford Board of Assessment Appeal. I hear a motion from the board. Mr. Chairman, on case 2020-080, make a motion to withdraw the appeal and no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I, I am not sure what other Verna properties there are. I, I don't see any other Verna properties unless they've already been removed. Uh, there's one more, um, Mr. Chairman, that we'd ask to be removed. Okay. Do you know the appeal number? I apologize, uh, Mr. Chairman, I do not. I just can tell you the address. Mr. Chairman, is it 720 North? Eight, eight it's eight actually um, 1104 North Colony Road. Okay. Do you have an appeal number for that, Kevin? I don't believe you have that in your packet for tonight's meeting, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I believe there's an over a million. Yes, uh, and they're withdrawn. Okay. Then, Kevin, you note, you note that, all right? Yep, I will. Okay. Any other Verna properties? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so so the Verna properties are all done. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so it comes down to now, uh, I believe that everything else is Gavin property. So we're going to go back to twenty twenty oh four four. So again, you're going to need a blanket authorization for all this. Yes, sir. We are going to listen to these. And we are going to review and we are going to um, vote uh, next week. Now, um, as we go through these, there's also errors with the ownership on the appeal. All right. So when we go back to 2020, all right, let's 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 do 2020-044. Okay. Uh, what's the address, Mr. Chairman? The address is 120 Church Street, which is the church building. <clears throat> Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, the subject property as of October 1st, 2020 was 100% vacant. It's roughly 26,000 square feet and it has a little over 10 acres. Um, and as far as I understand, um, the building is going to be most likely set to be demolished. Um, the building was valued as if it was 100% occupied um, by looking at their, um, their rental schedule and looking at their expense and they're also their cap rate. Um, <clears throat> so the building is 100% vacant. Um, you can see by the picture that you have um, several items uh, being used as yard storage. Um, not exactly something that you would see on a um, on a, uh, a building called Door of Hope uh, with a bunch of concrete next to it, especially the shipping and receiving bay doors. Um, the building has been vacant for um, several months and um, has been now uh, being used by uh, the current owner for uh, personal um, usage. And you have discussed this already uh, at the informal? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we did. We discussed all of these properties at the informal. Okay. Um, I hear a motion from the... Go I, I apologize, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, just one last thing. Um, in the, uh, the town of Wallingford's um, system, they use a 10% vacancy rate when the subject property is 100% occupied. However, in 2019, the property did have a tenant. Um, and unfortunately, the town of Wallingford, I'm not sure if they were aware that at the time of the reevaluation, the property was 100% vacant, receiving zero income. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion on uh, case 2020-044 to table this at the, uh, our special meeting and vote in it then. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the next one we have is 2020-042. Okay, yeah, so this, this, uh, this appeal, all right, is uh, I want a new uh, appeal sheet for this. Currently, it says property owner, Yalesville Properties, and all of them say Yalesville Properties. This property is owned by 30 a warehouse point road llc so uh i want a new i want a new appeal also uh filed with this <clears throat> uh, I, I beg your pardon your uh mr chairman are you saying that you'd like a new application with the correct ownership I want, I, yeah i want a new application i want the cover sheet to to correspond to the to the real owner of the property. So. Okay, <laughs> I apologize, Mr. Chairman. I'm just going to cough for a second. <clears throat> no problem. I mean, the the appeal has to match up with the the property ownership. Um, okay, I have no problem, Mr. Chairman. We'll make sure that you have that. Okay, so. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is 2020-048-38 Warehouse Point Road. Mr. Chairman, I believe this is hearing number 2020-042. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, what did I say? 48? Yes. You're, you're correct. Zero, 2020-042. Yeah, 38 Warehouse Point Road. 
LLC and the property is 38 Warehouse Point Road. Correct. Okay. And Kevin, your memo states current market value is 623 market value. And that that is a reduced market value. Correct. Um, correct. Yes. That was that was reduced at the informal hearing. And the appellant feels that the property is worth five hundred thousand. <throat> okay. Um, What uh, other items do you have to uh, share with us concerning this property? Well, Mr. Chairman, when you look at the um, the overall comparison between this and other comparable properties, um, this property has very limited heat, does not have any office or air conditioning. Um, and when we were looking at the overall rent that was assigned by, in the income model by the town of Wallingford, um, it was five dollars and fifty four cents. They were using um, about uh, seven and a half to eight percent of vacancy and eighty six cents a square foot for operating expense um, and a ten percent capitalization rate. And it was a little right around um, forty dollars a square foot. And when we were looking at um, other buildings very similar to Seven Carlton, um, just didn't seem that it was uh, comparable. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Sure. Well, according to the property record card, um, we, um, there is no heat that's indicated on this property, as well as um, it's strictly warehouse. There's no office space indicated on our property card. Okay. It's a net rent. Um, uh, four dollars and sixty-eight cents a square foot, Mr. Chairman. Um, is it rented? It's owner occupied, Mr. Chairman. Is that okay? Um, to answer your question, no, it's not rented. It is utilized 100% though. Okay, do I hear a motion? Make a motion 2020-042 uh, to table this case and uh, to the next special meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next hearing is 2020-043. Property location is 125 Church Street. Okay, the current market value the town places on it is $193,300. The market value has been reduced by $12,700 at the informal hearing, and the appellant's estimate of the property is $92,300. Go ahead, uh, Brian. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the property is currently being used for yard storage. Um, it has 0.26 acres. It's a non-conforming lot. If the improvement were to be knocked down or a, a good portion of percentage of the building would be knocked down, they could not replace the improvement. Um, the highest and best use for the land is for storage or for a seasonal store. As of October 1st, 2020, it was 100% vacant. Um, and the improvement actually adds zero value to the overall uh, property based upon the owner's needs. Okay, so so let me just ask a question. If the if the if it's all non-conforming, it doesn't suit his needs. It's probably in bad shape, and he needs to store it. Why is why is he keeping the building on the property? Uh, is, as of, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Why you know? Um, I'm I'm just asking the question. Of course. I think that's probably something that they're looking into. Um, sooner than later. Um, they've certainly demolished more than one building that they purchased um, in the town of Wallingford, and I wouldn't be surprised if this one is on their soon-to-be uh, demolished list. <clears throat> okay. The building adds very little value to the overall uh, parcel itself, um, but It definitely does not suit the need of somebody who's selling concrete. Right. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, make a motion for 2020-043 to table this case and uh, to a special meeting for voting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the next one will be 2020-053. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Can you repeat the um, the hearing number again, please? 2020-053. Uh, Three fifty North Period. Okay, as in the other one also, the appeal property owner is wrong. Property owner is three fifty North Cherry Street extension, so um a, a new one of those uh, is is going to be needed also. Okay. 350 North Cherry Street extension. Uh, market value placed on it is 665. Town has placed a a market value of six nine zero eight hundred, and uh, that was reduced by seventy thousand six hundred um, at the informal hearing. You couldn't you couldn't agree you couldn't agree on that. That was just too far apart, huh? Don't take this the wrong way, Mr. Chairman. Is that a statement or a question? Um, probably a question. I, I'll, I'll go with the question on it. Um, well, Mr. Chairman, um, I do have clients. Not everything's up to me, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. 
So actual rent, Mr. Chairman, is actually $4.25 a square foot, not $4.56 a square foot. Um, it's a single user facility. They do uh, make um, rolls for sandwiches or hamburgers or um, what have you. Um, it is, <clears throat> um, their lease is going to be expiring sometime soon. Um, they don't know if they're going to be able to renew the tenant. It's a going concern for them. Um, and that's the reason why they uh, continued on with the appeal, Mr. Chairman. So you have a difference in rent of 31 cents. So I apologize. Okay, do I hear a motion from the board? Make a motion, uh, Mr. Chairman, case 2020-053 to table and vote on in a special meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 2020-50. Okay. 43 Warehouse Point Road. Um, currently, the building is occupied by three tenants. Two out of the three tenants are triple net um, with reimbursables. Um, about 6,600 square feet of the overall building is not triple net. Um, the largest tenant um, currently, as of the reevaluation, was in default um, for the lease over a year. Um, the landlord is currently working out a replacement, uh, excuse me, a repayment plan. Um, and the tenant has not caught up um, yet. And they're, um, if, if they're gonna be in the building going forward is uncertain. So that largest tenant is Crates LLC and they occupy 10,000 square feet. What is the name of it? It's Crates LLC, it's C-R-A-T-E-S LLC. And currently, they're paying four dollars and seventy-five cents a square foot. Triple net. Yes, sir. And so, the town at the informal hearing did reduce uh, reduce the property. Yes, Mr. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a, a motion for 2020-050 to table and, and make a vote on a special meeting. Uh, if I may just add one last thing, if you don't mind, please. Sure. Two out of the three tenants are paying $4.75 a square foot. One is triple net, and the other one is, is a, on a uh, gross basis. The town of Wallingford is using a rent of $5.79 a square foot. So let me just ask a question, um, uh, Kevin. Where where do we get that figure from the income and expense? Uh, typically, if it's rented, the, the income and expense statements um, that we send out a couple years prior to the revaluation, we ask for that information. So if it's rented, uh, typically that's provided. So was updated information provided at the informal hearing about the change in rental values? That I don't have in front of me. I don't have the informal hearing paperwork. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the income and expense statement was filed with the town of uh, Wallingford um, sometime in May of 2020. That would be the most recent submittal. And what do you know what that what it said on there? I'm um, looking at it right now, Mr. Chairman. Um, it had a, a total revenue. I'm sorry. Um, it had a total revenue of uh, 148,560, 
and it also included reimbursables of $23,200. That is not income, that is simply reimbursable for expenses. Okay, so we have that, that we have that information if it was filed in May. Uh, and not to mention it was included in the submittal that I uh, sent to you today. Okay, which I haven't, again, which I haven't looked at because sending it, I didn't get it till the start of the meeting, so. Understood, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Okay, so uh, I think we had a motion to table it. I was waiting for a second, Mr. Avery. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Twenty twenty oh fifty one. Okay, twenty twenty oh fifty one yields with properties forty one. Warehouse Point Road. It's 41 Warehouse Point Road. Um, this is occupied by a single tenant. Um, they're currently um, for some time on a month to month lease. It is not triple net. Um, they are paying $82,800 a year. Um, they're very hesitant on signing a long term lease. Uh, the rent on a per square foot basis is uh, actually, you know, apologize, there we go. So as I said, it's on a month to month basis. Um, it's not triple net. Um, and uh, looking at the income field card by the town of Wallingford, they're treating it as if it was triple net. And when we looked at the um, the field card uh, also next door um, for the income. They're also treating that as if it was triple net. Um, one of the things that we did um, as a, just a comparison is when we were looking at Warehouse Point, we also looked at North Plains Industrial uh, Park Road, um, and they're treating that as, uh, as if it would be modified gross or gross. Uh, the difference in cap rate would be an 8% to a 10%. And I don't know how good your golf game is, Mr. Chairman, but I can hit my sand wedge from Warehouse Point to North Plains Industrial Park. Um, okay. So let's. Um... We don't exactly have a ton of desire, uh, excuse me, a bunch of amenity type of properties around uh, Warehouse Point. It's not like you can walk to a restaurant, it's not like you can walk to shopping or things of that nature, just like on North Plains Industrial Park Road, um, which I would consider that street um, actually superior to Warehouse Point. Well, you used to be able to, till Gavin bought Gigantius and tore it down. You can walk to there. I mean, get a nice sandwich, I think. Oh, my God. We're, we're, let's go get them right now. <laughs> Nobody loves a good sandwich as much as, much as I do. Did you ever eat there? Uh, I've never had the pleasure. And trust not me when I mean this, I mean that's the thing. It's not there anymore. <laughs> well, you know something? It's my loss then. So, okay. However, I'm very interested in trying Vinny's. Trying what? Uh, it's it's Vinny's, right? Um, not very far oh, from oh, here. Yeah. I thought you said I thought you said Denny's. I'm like, why? Why um, would you? No, 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 no. I I wouldn't Denny's. try Denny's yeah. when I was in elementary school. You're not going to get me to try it now. Yeah, yeah. It uh, Denny's has lost its luster. Yeah, so is Friendly's. <laughs> they lost the building. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's all right, go back to, to the uh, the fun and the appeals. 
2056. Mr. Chairman, I, um, excuse me, I'm not sure if they made a motion or if the board has made a motion on 051. Do I hear a motion, a motion. on 2020 051? Make, Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, on 2020 051 to table this case and um, vote on a special meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we're 2020-056 Yalesville property. Okay, so this this appeal needs to have a new uh, needs a change of ownership name from Yalesville Partners to Wallingford Group LLC. This is 39 North Plains Road. Um, $740,000 is your new market value. The town currently has a market value of $820,900. And that has been reduced uh, by forty thousand dollars. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, um, eight thousand square feet of the property is currently in default. Um, they're over uh, five months behind in their rent. Um, they have not been able to catch up. E eviction may be inevitable, and uh, most of the other tenants are looking for rent reduction or deferments. And that's what we're seeing with properties that have office space or office flex. And that would be including um, all the properties on North Plains that we've discussed tonight. So, um, and, and I don't know if you can tell me this, who, who is that tenant, just so I can get a feel for. Well, um, Mr. Chairman, if you're in the service industry, um, uh, and if you're doing something like karate, or if you're doing yoga, or if you're doing um, things with, you're having the general public to come in, um, then you're going to have an issue with keeping your doors open. Um, and I know for a fact that there are several of those types of tenants over these three properties that are located on North Plains Industrial Road. Okay. Um, the landlord has asked me not to identify, identify them per se, uh, just to hit it with a broad brush with um, service industry and things of that nature. Um, but if push comes to shove, we'll be more than happy to give you the full names of those businesses. No, no, you, 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 I think you've given the board uh, enough information with that. Uh, so, um, Mr. Chairman, um, many of my clients have uh, tried to come up with tenants or business or a business model design for something to avoid Amazon. And now they have to, and that was backfilling it with um, uh, workout facilities, yoga facilities, think karate, things of that nature. And now we have to find something that's COVID protected. Um, so with, with some of these types of mixed use types of facilities, they're in for a um, one heck of a ride. And I'm really trying to be polite. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion? Make a motion for 2020-056 to table this case and vote on a special meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Twenty twenty dash oh four nine. Um pardon me, I have to get up for one second. I apologize. Yeah, why don't why don't we take a um
a 10 minute break. All right. Come back quarter to eight. That sounds good. Okay. All right. I, I, I apologize, Mr. Chairman. I just dropped a piece of paper. No, why don't, why don't we take a break until the quarter of eight? I have, uh, I have to do something also. Is everybody in agreement with that? Uh, I'm just going to stay logged on, um, and I'll just come back in eight minutes if yeah. that's okay with no, everybody. That's, that's all we're going to do is I'll stay logged on. I'll, I'll uh, be, be back in uh, quarter of. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Shelly, you here? Yes, sir. All righty. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go on to 2020-049. Uh, uh, again, the, the appeals, uh, the appeal says yields for properties, the ownership is Wallingford Group. So uh, a correction in that, it would be uh, needed. So 47 North Plains Industrial Road. Of course I'm on the wrong icon. Why would I want to be on the right icon? My apologies, Mr. Chairman, I'm just looking over at this. Okay, so the town has a market value of $789,500, which was reduced. Uh, and the appellant has a market value of $700,000. Okay, I apologize, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> So currently there is uh, rent deferment uh, agreements in place for 10,000 square feet. Um, other tenants are behind the rent um, and they are going to have a, a very large capital cost in the near future uh, to replace the roof. And that is something they cannot pass off onto the tenants and that'll be something that they have to incur by themselves. Um, the building is currently designed for five tenants. Um, you have um, a little bit of warehouse there, um, and it's Office Flex. The only one who is not uh, triple net is about, and please keep in mind, Mr. Chairman, I'm rounding, is 3,900 square feet is not triple net. Uh, the remaining portion of the facility is triple net. What's the average uh, price per square foot in there, do you know? The average uh, rent per square foot, Mr. Chairman? Mm -hmm. Yes. Quick math, Mr. Chairman, $5. $5. Um, it's, it's all over the place, Mr. Chairman. Um, so um, HandyWorks, is in 2,400 square feet. They pay $7,000 in rent. Um, Real Traps is in for roughly 3,200 square feet. They're paying uh, 17,600. Then you have Thermo Spa, um, who's in for, I uh, call it 9,500 square feet, which uh, they're paying $52,000. Um, so it's kind of all over the map. Um, I'm just trying to do quick math and an average for you. Okay, do I hear a motion? Make a motion for 2020-049 to table and vote at next meeting, special meeting. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Okay, 2020-052. My God, I was really good with my math. It was $5. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, it was 2020, uh, Mr. Chairman, and what was the uh, last three numbers, please? 
O fifty two five Capital Drive. Okay. Um, um, if I may, please, um, the building's one hundred percent vacant. At the time of reevaluation, um, they were vacant for six months. Um, however, the previous INE that was filed as of May of 2020 is reflecting a building that would have been 100% occupied. Um, the building is office flex, um, has more office space than it does have warehouse, according to uh, my client. Um, they were paying. And by the way, this was a uh, triple net facility. It was. And at the time, they were paying over $7.80 a square foot. Um, in the income model that the town of Wallingford was using, um, they were using a per square foot uh, uh, less than the subject was receiving. When they were occupied, they were using, uh, please keep in mind, I'm just rounding, $7.10 compared to the $7.85 that the subject was receiving when it was 100% occupied. In their um, income model, they were using 10% uh, for vacancy and a um, about $1.28 a square foot for expenses. We don't have any issue with their expenses. Uh, we just have an issue um, with their cap rates and also with um, their vacancy rate. Okay, As so, of right now, the landlord is paying all the taxes. Currently, the market value that the town has placed on it is $393,800, which was reduced by $53,700, and the appellant's value uh, of market value is $270,000. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion for 2020-052. To table this case and vote in the next special meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the next case is 2020 057. Galesville Properties. Again, uh, the appeal needs to be changed to reflect Wallingford Group LLC. It's 2020. 057 property is located at 21 North Plains Road. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, two of the tenants are um, in that uh, category that uh, we discussed. Um, earlier that are in the service industry, you have, actually, I apologize, three of them are. Um, you have Blue Ox Axe, you have a karate, and you also have a fitness. And that is roughly 15,000 square feet out of the roughly 21,250 square feet. Um, over 40% over um, of reduction in rent had to be uh, given um, to the largest tenant to make sure they did not go into default. And the other two tenants are also in negotiation for uh, reduction in rent so they don't go into default, um, all because of the pandemic, Mr. Chairman. Do I hear a motion? Motion 2020. Dash zero five seven to table this case and vote in next special meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The next case is twenty twenty. Oh fifty four. Mm 
Again, the appeal needs to be changed to reflect ownership as 36 Warehouse Point LLC. The property is 117 Church Street. So this is a um, I-40 zone. This has only 0.5 acres. This is a non-conforming lot. Um, this has only 21,780 square feet, I'm rounding. Um, so they could not actually build on this unless this property would be an adjoining lot to something else. We uh, give you three comparable land assessments of other I-40 zone sales. The average of that on a per acre basis is $108,000 or $54,000 for a half acre. There are some asphalt improvements on that, which are estimated to be over 30 years old. Um, we highly doubt that the asphalt actually has much economic life left. So if you take the 54,000 and with the very limited economic life of the asphalt, we're attributing $6,000 to that and we have a total market value of $60,000. And that was all included in the information that we received today. Can the board have any questions? Or do they have a motion? Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, 2020-054 to move to uh, and table this for, and vote on next special meeting. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 2020-55. another vacant piece of land. Okay, so 2020-055. So we need the authorization, a new appeal, because this is a piece of property owned by North Cherry Street Extension. So when you say this is a vacant piece of land, uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> is this um, part of the Cristoni property or no? Kevin, I'm not familiar with that terminology, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I, it was bought from Cristoni Family Realty back in. Oh yes, well, it was. So is it? Is that entire property now raw land, or is it still the building on it? The building or is, is it, or is it separate land, separate properties. It's still separate. Pro there's three properties that were bought. It's my understanding there are three properties bought for six hundred and ten thousand dollars. They're okay. still three, and um, a permit was pulled to demolish the building on this parcel in March of 2020. So the building was removed for the 2020 grand list. Off of this property. Right. So what what part of this property is this? Uh, uh, it used to be, I don't know the name of the business, but there was a hoop house. So 
so we're, we're changing one part of that part well not parcel they're individual parcels but right there's three individual parcels there so and one part of it now has no building on it that's correct this is the smallest parcel i believe Board members have any questions? Have a motion. Make a motion for 2020-055 to table and vote on next special meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that wraps up all of those. Okay, so we're gonna need that authorization and we're gonna need the changes in those appeal uh to the actual owners um and get those to us as soon as possible so we can then continue our discussions and uh voting on these uh properties and appeals um thank you very much mr chairman thank you uh very much uh, mr avery um i will just go with mr carl because i can't see your last name um god only knows uh you're if uh, what's going on over there, Mr. Carl, it could be espionage. It seems very dark over there. Uh, but thank you again. Um, I greatly appreciate your time and um, I appreciate it. And uh, I will make sure that all that information is available to you um, as soon as possible. Thank you. Have a good evening. Uh, gentlemen, uh, please have a pleasant night and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, have a good night. Okay, so we have one one more appeal, and that is uh, Dennis LaForge, who I see is with us. Hi, Dennis, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Hi, this is Kevin. Um, Mr. Vitale, the chairman of the board, is uh, ready to speak. Okay. okay. So this is appeal number 2020-004. Mr. LaForge, I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Um, so we're not here to discuss actually the market value of a property because you didn't put anything in that space. See, please see attached explanation seeking penalty waiver due to COVID-19 and not receiving income and expense report. So I'm going to jump right to the to the end here because uh, yes, I realized that the um, the penalty wasn't applied. I, I appreciate that. Um, my my biggest issue is um, I'm a a bar um, music venue, and I've been out of business a full year since uh, last March 15th due to the pandemic. So the property has generated zero income um, for the past year. Um, so um, any any relief okay, you let can me, uh, uh, let me jump let me jump right over to uh, Mr. Coons there and have yeah. him explain his he he has written a mem a memorandum concerning this and 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 uh, Kevin I'm going to have you explain that. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, that the memo may be a little bit outdated. Um, just to give you a little background, I was um, in preparation of these hearings. I reviewed it, um, Mr. LaForge's appeal, and I noticed that he uh, we did not apply a 10% penalty for not filing a, an income and expense statement for 2020. 
Um, however, I did, uh, and I spoke or I left a message with him maybe a week or so ago, give or take, but I did talk to him today and, um, you know, after I, I did explain to him that he was not assessed a 10% penalty, but I noticed based on his letter that he submitted to the board that he's sort of making two points that he, he thought he, um, he is questioning, he is apparently questioning the value of his property based on what he just um, described um, that he's been shut down for a period of time. So I thought it was appropriate that, uh, you know, you, you hear this uh, appeal. Oh yeah, no, no problem. I'm, I'm just, I jumped to the end because I saw your recommendations there and. Uh, yeah, but I did not so, want you today to, to update that memo accordingly to let you know that I did speak to him. So. But for the record. Okay, he was, okay. Um, Mr. LaForge, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I, go ahead and keep talking. I'm going to read your explanation here and. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, uh, basically that's my situation. I've been uh, uh, forcibly shut down for the past year and uh, still awaiting guidance from the state to reopen. So obviously things have been very difficult financially. So um, uh, uh, based on that, I mean, this this type of property I don't feel is worth what it used to be because there's very little uh, financial incentive to own it right now. Um, so, but yeah, any, any uh, relief you guys could offer me would be greatly appreciated. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, please, Kevin, I need help. Okay, I, I, um, I do. If I were to change the memo today, I would certainly document that I spoke to Mr. LaForge, but um, after reviewing this quickly, um, he had a small increase from 2015 to 2020. Um, the property does indicate that it's in poor condition um, and whatnot. So the value is at 195,800. Um, I would, from our standpoint, I would not rec recommend a change, but you know, the board is a separate, so. Okay, so your your assessed value on the reval went from um, $130,100 to $137,000. So you have a uh, an increase of $6,900 that you would be taxed on. Um, Okay. Um, um, and it, it doesn't sound like much, but <laughs> but um, right now uh, anything helps. <laughs> yeah. Well, you 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 were not assessed a ten percent penalty, which uh, would have added uh, thirteen thousand dollars uh, um, in. Thirteen thousand dollars in extra taxable assessed value. Um, yeah. So you you didn't get hit with that, which you know people who have not filed and have the same are in the same situation with COVID and what have you. You know they have uh, uh, have had to deal with that. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I think. I think the you know the hundred and thirty seven thousand uh, dollars the the additional sixty nine hundred dollars um, may offset the fact that you didn't you didn't get hit with the penalty. Uh, if I hear anything from the board, you know questions or what they feel. No, I uh, I I think it's a I think it's it's a pop, big huge positive that the ten percent was not weighed in. That that yeah very significant so i think that helped him a great deal um may i make a motion mr chairman please 
Please. I make a motion of no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. Thank you. So do I hear a motion? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Kevin, can you uh, make us off the court? Sure. Hey, Kevin, I want to talk to you after the meeting just to go over a couple of things to make.